Number 15. What is the threshold frequency for sodium metal if a photon with frequency 6.66 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second ejects an electron with 7.74 times 10 to the negative 20th joules of kinetic energy? And then will the photoelectric effect be observed if sodium is exposed to orange light? Okay, so it's a two-part question. So we'll answer the first question first. We have to find out what the threshold frequency is. So I'm just going to represent this by saying threshold frequency. Okay, now what is a threshold frequency? This is the minimum frequency, so the minimum F needed to produce the photoelectric effect. So I'm just going to put PE. So it's the minimum frequency that is required in order to produce a photoelectric effect, which is a phenomenon that is in physics and chemistry. So let's go into what the photoelectric effect is. Just to, guys, just to give you guys a uh, background. So the photoelectric effect is basically this. If you had a piece of metal, and in this case you have sodium metal, right? Now, waves are, in the photoelectric effect, waves are going to be basically, you know, shot at that piece of metal. So whether you have waves that are longer, it will be shot, you know, pro projected at the metal. I'm going to say that this is the metal. Oop. Versus waves that are much, much shorter. Kind of like this, right? So let's just say that the longer wave has a wavelength of, I don't know, 700 nanometers. And the shorter one had a wavelength of a much shorter number. So let's just say 400. This doesn't really matter, the numbers. But one will produce the photoelectric effect and one will not, depending on the threshold frequency. Now, longer waves, aka the one that has the longer wavelength, chances are will not produce the photoelectric effect, meaning that this photoelectric effect is when electrons are ejected from the metal. Basically, it will bounce back. And always higher frequencies, because you have to be above the threshold, higher frequency numbers will get you the photoelectric effect. So the one on the right-hand side with the lower frequency will have the photoelectric effect more because it probably will pass over the threshold frequency, which means that the electrons will hit the metal and then, boom, bounce right back. So I'll just put this little circle as my electron, and electrons will be, quote-unquote, ejected. And, you know, electrons are moving, so it will have a certain velocity. And the higher the frequency... The higher the frequency, the more chance you will have the photoelectric effect because you will go over the threshold frequency. And the much higher the frequency, the higher the velocity. The faster those electrons will be ejected from the metal. And just know that wavelength and frequency have an indirect relationship with each other. So the lower the wavelength, the higher the frequency. So you guys should know and understand that type of information. So that's basically the photoelectric effect in a nutshell. Now we just have to find the threshold frequency. Well, how do we do that? Well, there's a formula, but it's linked with energy. It says that the energy of the threshold can be found by taking the photon energy and just subtracting by the kinetic energy. But they all have to be in E's. If you hear my dog in the background, I am so sorry. Probably the mailman has just come. You know, you know dogs love mailmen. But anyway, so this equation is all about energy, but we want the frequency. So we can just do a quick substitution and just relate this equation with all frequencies. So I'm just going to say V for now because that's the um, variable that's given in your textbook. So V of the threshold, the threshold frequency, equals the frequency, and V is frequency, so the photon 
whatever the uh, frequency of the photon is, minus the frequency of the kinetic energy. So let's see, do we know anything as of right now? Well, they tell us that a photon has a frequency of this, 6.66 times 10 to the 14th. So we know this number, right? We know the frequency of the photon. It's 6.66 times 10 to the 14th. And we're looking for this, right? The frequency of the threshold, because that's what the question is asking. But do we know the frequency of the kinetic energy? Well, we have the actual kinetic energy, but we don't have the frequency. So what would we have to do? We would just have to take the energy and just solve for the frequency, right? What formula can I go back and forth between energy and frequency? Oh, it's E equals H V. And remember, H is a constant number. It's Planck's constant. So that's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second. So I'm just going to do it over here. E equals HV. The energy that they gave us was um, 7.74 times 10 to the negative 20th equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, times V. Solve for frequency, all you got to do is just divide by Planck's constant. 10 to the negative 34th, divide by 6 point, whoop, 6.626, times 10 to the negative 34th. Put that into your calculators. The frequency of the kinetic energy source was, let's do it right now, 7.74 times 10 to the negative 20th divided by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. Rounded to three sig figs, we get 1.17 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. So S to the minus one, or you can say hertz. So now this answer will be used for this. So now we know both of these. So this one is 1.17 times 10 to the 14th. And now we can solve for the threshold frequency because it's 6.66 times 10 to the 14th minus 1.17 times 10 to the 14th. So I will put that up. Well, actually, I have some room down here. So the threshold, threshold frequency is just those two numbers subtracted. 6.66 times 10 to the 14th minus 1.17 times 10 to the 14th, and you get 7.79. Oop, I did times. <laughs> we don't want times, we want minus. I was going to say that number is a little crazy. Okay, so we get 5.49. 5.49 times 10 to the 14 cycles per second. That's the threshold frequency. That's the answer to the first part. Box that off. This is to the minus one. Now, what does this mean? Okay, well, we have a threshold frequency of 5.49 times 10 to the 14 cycles per second. So that means that anything that's above a frequency that's a higher number will produce the photoelectric effect. But anything below that number, the frequency that's lower, will not produce the photoelectric effect. That's all that that means. Whether the electrons are going to be ejected or not ejected depends on the frequency threshold. So the second part says, will the photoelectric effect be observed if sodium is exposed to orange light? So basically, we just got to find out what the frequency of this orange light is and just link it to the threshold frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to box this over here. Oop, make this a little bit. Okay. So that's why we have our handy dandy visible light spectrum, because we have to find out what orange light is. Now, um, orange, looks, orange looks roughly around here, right? So... What does this represent? Right here, I would say that this is 6,200 angstroms. Now, we've done tons of um, conversions between angstroms to meters. If you want to go from angstroms to meters, all you got to do is just divide by 10 to the 10th. 
So I'm going to take that 6,200 angstroms and divide by 10 to the 10th because I have to get that number into meters in order to get my wavelength. So divide by 10 to the 10th, you get 6.2. So this is the same thing as 6.2 times 10 to the 7th, negative 7th, meters. Okay. So we have a wavelength of 6.2 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, and this is for the orange light. How do I go from a wavelength to a frequency, right? I can't, con um, I can't compare apples to bananas. I have to get my frequency. Oh, but we know a formula, right? We can say C equals wavelength times frequency. And what is C? Speed of light. That's a constant number, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth. So 2.998 times 10 to the 8th equals the wavelength, which is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 7th times V. Solve for your frequency. All you got to do is divide by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 7th on both sides. And frequency of the orange light is going to be 2.998 times 10 to the 8th divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative seventh, you get 4.8. We'll say 4.83 times 10 to the 14th. This should only be two sig figs. So 4.8 or 4.83, it doesn't really matter. Times 10 to the 14th cycles per second or hertz, whatever you want. Okay, now we just have to compare this frequency to the threshold frequency. Remember, if this frequency is lower, then the threshold frequency, no photoelectric effect. But if it's higher, then there will be a threshold. Uh, then there will be a photoelectric effect, meaning that electrons will be ejected off of the metal. So let's see. Our threshold was 5.49 times 10 to the 14th. The orange light frequency was 4.83 times 10 to the 14th. What do you think this number is, smaller or larger than the threshold? This one is smaller right? Because 4.83 is smaller than 5.49. So we're in this category, lower frequency, no photoelectric effect. So by them asking, will the photoelectric effect be observed? The answer would be no, because the frequency of orange light is less than the threshold frequency. It didn't make it. It was shy by just a little bit. And, uh, no electrons will be ejected off of the metal. All right. So this one was fun. Hopefully you guys learned this out and how to, you know, get threshold frequency, photoelectric effect. Let me know in the comments what you think. Love to hear from you guys. And if you want more questions coming right in your feed, click the subscribe button. You'll also help other people gain access to this awesome service. I think it's pretty awesome. What do you guys think though? <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.